Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan Tennant and today we are talking about how to describe characters. So this video is dedicated to Sathapine, who is one of my lovely patrons. I needed video ideas and so I periodically asked my kittens and Sathapine recommended this one and it sounded like fun. So thank you Sathapine for the suggestion. You can go follow her, her links are in the description and also in the end card because she is wonderful. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, actually describe them. I know, not what you wanted to hear. Though if you planned on not describing your characters, I'm not quite sure why you're watching this video, but you know, you do you. Some authors will argue that you don't need to give a physical description to your characters because readers will just make one up if you don't. And although that is true for some readers, it is not true for all of them. And the readers who are not capable of creating these images in their head without the help of a description are going to be just completely unable to enjoy your book. But readers who are capable of designing the characters in their head will be able to design the characters they want in their head even if you provide a description for the character. So it's just an overall safer bet to just describe them. Tip number two, don't over describe your characters. Because with that last tip being said, there are no readers out there in the world that don't know at least the basics of what a human looks like. Because here's the thing, we've been staring at faces literally since we were born. That's why we see faces in weird things in like bread and crackers and all over the place is just because that's one of the first things you see and you don't remember that, but your brain recognizes the patterns of a face. So we have all of these images of faces cataloged in our head and we're even capable of just composing random faces. This means you do not have to describe things like nose shape, jawline, cheekbone height, eye shape, or anything like that unless it's relevant or stands out in some way. Generally speaking, you will want to describe things like hair color, style, and type, eye color, any piercings, tattoos, or markings, general height, general body build, general skin tone, anything where you don't want your reader to just picture what they see as a default person. For example, if your character has no teeth, that might be worth mentioning. If your character has massive breasts, you could add a brief description of that. And when I say brief, I mean brief. I don't want to see your book on the men describing women Twitter in two years. Tip number three. Don't make comparisons to celebrities. I cannot say this enough. This is one of my personal pet peeves. Look, I get it. You want to bang Chris Pratt. That doesn't mean you can say that the love interest in your story looks exactly like Chris Pratt. And yeah, I get that you also want to bang Jennifer Lawrence, but that doesn't mean you get a free pass to ride in a love triangle. Just go watch Passengers and write a fanfic or something like all of the rest of us. So there are... <laughs> Serious talk, there are so many reasons why this is a bad idea. A. That's not an A, that's a 1. It's not even an A in sign language. A. The reader might not know who that actor is. B. It dates your work. 3. It's generally immersion breaking. I think I said number 3. Number C. Not number. Letter C. This is just a disaster. What am I doing? Why did I decide to even make these a list? D. Actors' appearances change over time, and you probably want people to be able to still read this book in 20 years. Chris Pratt, who was super hot, like maybe in 20 years he's kind of more of a dad character and a dad role, and your new readers are gonna read that and be like, whoa, I don't want to picture my dad in this love interest role. And that's a problem. Also, actors fall off of wagons, sometimes figuratively, sometimes literally, and that can change their appearance. Either because they deglove their face, that's a term, don't Google it, or because they become crackheads, and just, it's a bad idea, and it's just lazy writing anyways. 
But with that being said, having a secret Dreamcast can be helpful for you. Create a folder and then put in images of either one actor that looks kind of like how you want this character to look or multiple different actors or models or random people. And when you're writing them, just reference those images because it'll make it easier for you to describe it accurately and no one has to know that you're using reference images. It can be your dirty little secret. Tip number four, make aesthetic boards. Yes, I'm giving you an excuse to procrastinate. You are welcome. I don't recommend you do this for all characters because then you'll just procrastinate forever and I'm not giving you that extent of an excuse. But for your main characters and your main villains, add images of certain aspects of their appearance that stand out against the norm and make them who they are, things like that. Tip number five, avoid cliched comparisons and descriptions. These are things like saying her hair is as red as a rose or his eyes are as blue as the sky. He was built like a bear. If you use too many of these, your writing is going to start to feel really stale. Instead, use this as a great opportunity to not only world build, but to build out the character whose POV this information is being filtered through because you can show what they're most frequently exposed to. For example, you could say her eyes were as blue as the core of a portal, or her hair is as red as the lights of the radiation alarm, or he's as big as a biolink bear, which truth be told are supposed to be the same size as old world bears, but who would know because they've been extinct for 500 years and I don't know what an old world bear looks like. Bam, world building. <laughs> Tip number six, be careful with purple prose. I love purple as much as the next person and purple prose has its place, but its place is not in character descriptions. You can add a little bit, but you have to tread very carefully here because when it comes to character descriptions, the bridge over the river of cheese is a thin one. Yes, that's the description I chose to go with. Tip number seven, don't pause the story to describe characters. Character description will flow so much nicer if you can weave it into the scene and what's currently happening, especially if you can tie it directly into movement. This is especially helpful for first person where the character is describing themselves. For example, I pull an elastic band from the jumble of items inside the cubby and tie my uneven hair into a knot. A few dark red waves escape my trembling hands. They swing loose on the right side of my face, obscuring my vision. My fingertips meet uneven skin as I glide them across a scarred cheek, brushing the hair to one side. Nearly two decades worth of similar scars speckle my body. Some of the marks I can feel, others, like the small number tattooed on the left side of my face, I often forget exist. You can implement this with other characters too when describing their actions. For example, later on in that same chapter, the first chapter of Aletheia, I make reference to 1633 not having an arm using the motion of him shrugging. Another way to keep the story going is to weave in these little bits of character description throughout multiple paragraphs or dialogue or something else that breaks it up. Because not only will that make it more interesting, but that way the reader never feels like you hit pause on the image so that the narrator could then describe to them what something looks like. Number eight, generally speaking, the more important the character, the more description they should get. Now keep in mind that if there's a character that you don't want to seem important but is actually important, keep their description minimal though when they're first introduced and you can then add to it later as they become more important. Also keep in mind that if you're filtering through a POV character, the amount of description will actually depend on how important that character is to the POV character in that moment. But do not waste the reader's time by giving a full description for a character that's gonna exist for like half a scene and then we're never gonna see them again. We're not gonna remember them anyways, so you don't really need to pair descriptors to them unless, again, it's something out of the norm. Number nine, keep in mind scene pacing when describing characters. If a mysterious stranger shows up just in time to help your POV character as he's running through a crowded market trying to escape a dark brotherhood assassin, don't waste your precious words in this fast paced moment to stop and describe things like their eye color because your character wouldn't notice that in the moment. Now if that mysterious stranger jumps over a box dashing through an alley and then your character then trips over it, they might notice that the mysterious stranger is very tall. Then it makes sense to maybe add in that detail, but otherwise just wait until they finally found a safe rooftop and they're hiding and they're trying to catch their breath and then that's when your character is going to look the stranger over and analyze them more deeply and this is where you can add the description. 
Besides, your reader not knowing what they fully look like before is just gonna kind of add to the sense of a, the blur of motion and action and running, and it's gonna put them deeper into the shoes of the main character. Tip number 10. As a general rule, don't use food comparisons to describe any physical trait, ever. Unless maybe your main character is a chef and they compare everything to food and that's just like their thing and it makes sense to that character. Otherwise, don't say skin the color of caramel. Say golden brown. Don't say her breasts were like juicy ripe melons. Say basically anything else that is not that. <laughs> Comparing someone's physical traits to food is not only cliche, but it can also be dehumanizing. As you're linking this person to something that exists purely for the purpose of being consumed. It can also be viewed as fetishizing and uncomfortably sexual. There are just too many strange undertones here, so do not be a crepe and cut the food words. You're welcome, I put all of the puns into one sentence and now you are safe and that that's it. That's, that's all the puns for the rest of the video. Tip number 11, don't use a mirror to describe your character. That, that's it, that's the tip. Rule number 12, not rule, tip, tip number 12. If your story is filtered through a POV character, remember that the descriptions are going to be biased. The way a POV character describes someone tells us a lot about not only that character, but their relationship to this other person. If they're describing someone that they love or are very attracted to, odds are they're gonna put more focus on the perfections and they're going to ignore some of the flaws. Um, in which case, you can often have an external third character bring up the love interest's flaws so that the reader knows about them, but it still makes sense that the biased POV would have kind of filtered those out. Whereas if they're describing someone they hate, they're going to look for the flaws specifically. If it's family, they'll likely draw comparisons to themselves, given the genetic connection. If it's a rival, they may measure their own traits against this person, and that can give you a good point to bring up their own traits. And if it's a friend, they're gonna probably look for things that they relate to. Word choice will also be hugely important here because the words they use are going to depend again on their relationship with that character. For example, if your POV character is attracted to someone, their scruffy beard could be described as rugged, whereas if that exact same person is instead a rival, they might instead describe their beard as mangy. Which ties directly into tip number thir- thir- <laughs> Tip number 13, pay very close attention to word choice. For example, I could describe a guy's beard as any one of the following. Scruffy, untidy, mangy, rugged, shaggy, unkempt, neglected, bedraggled, dilapidated, rickety. Okay, I ran out of synonyms, but even if you cut off those last two, those are a lot of different words, and each has a slightly different image that you would pair to it. So look up synonyms when you're describing characters because there might be a word that you don't use very often, but gives the right type of vibe in this situation. And last but not least, tip number 14, make a character profile. Because you're gonna tell yourself that you can remember your character designs, but you're a f***ing liar. And you won't remember, especially if it's a series. And then if you want to remember to make the later books in the series accurate, you're gonna have to go back and reread the first book. Because you cannot, for the life of you, remember which I had the bigger blotch of brown. And did I ever give this character a number tattoo? How could he have gone the whole book without a number tattoo? He's the main character, and yes, his name is a nickname and it's not a number, but how did I not think to give him a freaking number tattoo? So there must be a number tattoo described somewhere in the book, but now I gotta find it, so I gotta read the whole- So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go watch my video on world building clothing because it was fantastic. If you want to suggest videos and have them dedicated to you, like the lovely Sathopine, go become a patron. Links are in the description down below. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. Say you